break and come back and continue. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Welcome back, dear viewers. We continue to look at the weapons of Satan and the satanic forces used to misguide people. We said that this is something we should teach our family members. Everybody should know this. It should be clear. We're in a battle with Satan. And Allah warned us in so many places in the Quran to beware of Satan. He is your enemy. So we were looking at the method by exaggerating worship. Acts of worship are exaggerated and what that leads to is the opposite of what one intends in the end. So the Prophet on one occasion he came to a masjid, he visited the masjid on more than one occasion actually and he found a man in there praying. And then afterwards he asked the people who is looking after this man's family? And they said his brother so he said, his brother is better than him. His brother is better than him. So it's not about just praying all the time. Praying is good. And the more prayer you do, the better. But it should be within the realm of what is reasonable. Prayer should not stop one from doing one's duty to one's family. So that kind of exaggeration in worship, you know, Prophet Sallallahu had said that People who exaggerate in worship, eventually it will overcome them. It will be too much and they will end up crumbling and not being able to do anything. The other form of exaggeration is in negligence. The people become lax and lazy. So the religious requirements, they stop doing or only doing them on occasion. So you have the phenomenon of what we call today the Friday Muslim. He only prays on Friday. Or the Ramadan Muslim, he only prays in Ramadan. What is this? There's no such thing. A Muslim prays five times a day. If he abandons that, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the distinction between the belief and disbelief is prayer. Whoever abandons the prayer has become a disbeliever. So in fact, the person who doesn't pray except on Fridays or doesn't pray except in Ramadan, in fact they have fallen into a state of disbelief. Depending on what's happening in their hearts, we, you know, whether they're actually a, a disbeliever in the full sense or not, that's between them and Allah. But externally, they are doing acts of disbelief by not engaging in regular prayer. So negligence is dangerous also. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ prescribed a variety of supererogatory acts of worship, what we call the sunnah. Before each obligatory prayer, there are sunnah prayers. Before and after. Before to prepare one going into the prayer, after to make up for mistakes in the prayer. And the, if a person sticks with those and becomes lax, then they go down to just doing the obligatory. But if all they're doing is the obligatory, they become lax, then they fall into abandonment of prayer. Very dangerous state. Similarly, before we fast in the rest of the year, and after fasting in the rest of the year, we have recommended days of fasting. Whether Shawwal, we have six days from Shawwal, we're encouraged to fast after fasting Ramadan. Or every Monday and Thursday. Or the three days, the three days of the full moon of every month, we're encouraged to fast these days throughout the year. These are supererogatory fasts. And again, there's additional reward. If we get a bit lax, maybe we leave off some of those, but we don't get lax with our obligatory fasts. Likewise, for every other act of worship, there are supererogatory forms of worship to help protect that core of worship. So negligence in the supererogatory doesn't harm the obligatory. But negligence in the obligatory is very dangerous. One may fall, by the way, completely. The third way in which Satan operates on people is through procrastination and laziness. Putting off till tomorrow what you should be doing today. Lazy, not getting up and praying in the early morning, right? The early morning prayer, Fajr. Prophet Muhammad Sallam had said it's the most difficult prayer for the hypocrites. 
those who are externally Muslim or pretend to be Muslim, but internally they really don't believe. Difficult to get up, you know, early in the morning and pray. It's easier to sleep. And regarding a man who slept the whole night, Prophet Muhammad when he was asked about him, he said, Satan urinated in his ear. Satan urinated in his ear. That's his state. So being on time, doing things when they're supposed to be done, you know, not delaying, this is the way of true faith. Also, Satan uses the weapon of promises and wishes. As mentioned in the fourth chapter, verse 120, He promises them and arouses in them false hopes and desires. And Satan only promises them deception. His promises are only deception. So when you hear somebody saying that, you know, when a person is told, for example, that they shouldn't commit such sins, this is something punishable, Allah will punish them, etc. And they come out with, Allah Ghafur Rahim. Allah is most merciful. So they have this false hope in the forgiveness and mercy of Allah when they're not doing what is necessary to deserve that forgiveness and mercy. So these false hopes, Satan feeds on it. Person gets that feeling, well, it's all right, no problem. Other people around me are doing the same thing. Most people are not really praying regularly, so it's okay for me, etc. You know, this is satanic tricks. Also, his misguidance may come gradually. May not come right up in front of you, showing you the obvious state of misguidance. He brings you along gradually. You know, this is one of the methods that he uses. You know, just as we said, in the case of the people in the time of Noah, who ended up worshipping those idols, he didn't come to the people in the first generation and say to them, hey, worship these idols. No. He told them, make these idols to remind you of the good people so you'd remember to do good. And later on, when people forgot why they did the idols, then he told them, worship them. Because it's your, grand, your foreparents used to worship them, and that's why they used to have such good crops, and their harvests were wonderful, etc., etc. That's his methodology. Sly and slippery. That's why he's called Al-Khannas in Surah An-Nas. The one who whispers and he slips away. Also, he causes people to forget. When you forget Allah, then you can commit sin. If you're remembering Allah, very difficult. So, we find that mentioned in a number of places in the Quran where Allah speaks about Satan causing people to forget, as in the case of the Yusha ibn Nun, who was accompanying Prophet Musa when he was on his way to meet Khidr. Then he had put his, the basket down where they had the fish near the sea, and the fish went into the sea and swam away. He forgot to mention it to Prophet Musa. When Prophet Musa had asked him about it, he said, فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتَ وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ أَذْكُرَهُ That is, indeed, I forgot to tell you about the fish. And it was only Satan who caused me to forget, remembering to tell you. Also in the sixth chapter, verse 68, we see Allah saying there, وَإِمَّا يُنْسِيَنَّكَ الشَّيْطَانُ Either Satan was going to cause you to forget, he uses, uses this phrase. So, forgetfulness, which comes from Satan, is something dangerous for the human psyche. It's dangerous for humans trying to do good deeds, trying to lead righteous lives. Forgetfulness leads one into sin. And he also creates a state of misguidance through fear, excessive fear. Allah mentions in the third chapter, verse 175, Indeed, that is only Satan putting fear in his allies. So don't fear them. Fear me if you are truly believers. So Satan puts fear in people, people's fear of loss. 
of wealth leads them into seeking to gain wealth through illegitimate means, through stealing, through interest, through a variety of other ways. So it is important that we don't allow Satan to put that pressure on us so we end up being involved in the forbidden. With that, dear viewers, we're going to stop here. There are still a few more weapons of Satan that we need to look at, and we'll be looking at them, hopefully, in our next uh, episode, episode number seven of the series, The Empire of Deceit. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.